I'd like to thank all of you for coming back. I saw my slight problem with this, I don't know why. Sometimes you'll see my views at the top of each other. I'm not too sure what that is. So occasionally I'll have to go Windows, you know, tile vertical and get one back. Okay, so I, I uh, apologise in, in advance. So basically we're looking at the, at the uh, fixed decisions in version, version 11, which were not in version 10. So when you use decisions version 10, they checked, you know, you know, basically traditionally at a point on your shoulder possibly, how far above the tin you were, and then it would go and make a decision on, 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 that, uh, on the failure of that or the, or, or the actual success. So whether you do a table drain, whether you do a fill batters and that sort of thing. Great, great tool and uh, I think uh, uh, a fair few of the people out here would have used decisions at some time or other. But the problem was with them is that the first thing people asked me or asked anybody who was in, on, on the support line was, can I modify them? And the answer was no. You know, so once it, it made the decision, created that batter, whatever, whatever it did for that slope on that table drain, that was the end of the story. Okay, but not in, not in version 11. So there's a quite a bit of modifiers in here, so I won't be doing creating all these from scratch, as you'd appreciate. And there's 36 or something in this particular one. So basically on this job here, I've just inserted our strings for the main part of the road. So I've got our lane lines and that sort of thing out to the actual um, edge of shoulder. So inside the actual fixed part, you can go down to the actual decisions. And again, you get traditional type things that you would see in the, in the actual decisional templates. So we just insert one up here. What you get is these sorts of commands and you will recognize them. So you have things like go-to statements, labels, tins. It has a then statement, so it's a little bit uh, more programmatic than what the other decisions were. It's a go-to statement test. If not, then, then go to this one. So it's, a, it's that sort of idea, but the same as, uh, as what you're used to. You go and check a, against a tin, if, it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's successful, do a particular uh, option, and if it's not, go somewhere else. There's a couple of other nice ones there. You, you've got the actual traditional ones, batter decision, which is the ones where you check for uh, whether or not a link can be produced, and I, I, I do quite a bit of those here where I'm checking for batters and things like that. And there's also ones for string height, and a polygon one, and we'll do the string height and polygon one in this little session. So basically that's what the menu looks like. So the first decision I'll do at the start of the actual fixed decisions is like this, and so you'll start to recognise these. you say, okay, I'm going to check against the tin. The last link on my road was the edge of shoulder string, or the edge of pavement, and I'm going to check from minus one to a thousand. So like the old decisions, right, that's, that, that's sort of, so I can fit a table drain in that, that would be a metre deep. So it'll be minus one and 1,000. So that's what, it, what it's checking for. And then it's going to, if, if it can't do that, it's then going to go to a label called fill. And I said most of the sort of stuff you're used to doing in the actual decisions themselves. So with that, with that actual check there, if it's true, it drops to the next line. So what's on the next line is my table drain that I've been checking for. So if I go to my table drain, it's going to be two metres wide and minus one metre deep. But I'm using a fixed insert modifier, fixed insert modifier to do the table drain. So before the decision automatically happened for you, right, now it's actually you, you're going to the fixed insert like you would normally do, and you're inserting it. So straight away you must realise that, hey, if I'm doing that, then I, I'm using a normal modifier, I will be able to come back and modify that. And that's the secret of all this, uh, these actual fixed decisions. So Basically, this is where I start to do all my, my batter checks. I'm not in fill, right? Fill's right down the bottom here somewhere. Okay, that's where I'm going to go do my fill batter. So I want to start to do things like, I want to check for all these batter slopes. So all those, all those steps. Normally you might do a, some sort of loop where you loop around and keep on checking, doing as many batters as you want. But I'm only doing about three of them. So what we do is an actual batter, batter decision. Okay, just like the other one, it checks whether you can do the batter or not. Okay, and if it can do the batter, then it goes and does it. If it can't, then it'll go off and do a final cut batter. Most of the stuff you would have, uh, uh, this idea you would have got from the, the normal fixed decisions or the, 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 the old decisions. So what's on the next line is exactly what I want to do. So I'm, I'm going to insert a burn, and again, we're doing the fixed insert again. So we're just saying seven metres at minus 50, one in two, and that, that's the burn. 
So in, in my check before that, I checked whether I could do the one burn and the little step. So I've actually done a check on two burns, and if that's okay, I'm going to do both those. So what's on the next line is a little three metre shelf or, or benching, and it does the burn number two. So as this case here, I'm, only, uh, I'm going to do a, a few more of these. I'm going to check each time now whether I can do those two burns again and again. So I end up doing about three of them. So that's what those little checks are there. Again, you've got a batter, a, a batter decision chest, another batter check. And then finally, I get right down the bottom here and I go to do final cut. So I said, you've got the idea that it's, it's very similar to what the other one, so I don't think you'll have too much trouble using these. They're just like the same with the, with the, with the old decisions. So when I get to the do final cut, so I get down to this part here. So how am I going to do the do final cut? Normally I just go to a, the final cut and feel or something like that. So I, but I'll, I want to use the fixed inserts and all those sort of things so that I can modify them easily later on. So if I then go to my do final cut label, it's just a simple label. So what's on the next line? I insert my interface string. So it's just like you're doing the final uh, cut and fill, you know, when it says uh, zero and you know, uh, 50 metres, wherever it may be, and that, that sort of stuff. What I've got to do, I've got to insert the string, then I've got to tell it to go down to a tin surface because that's what th th this sort of modifier is all about. So first I have to create the string. So I'll, I'll give it an arbitrary width of zero. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to modify it again straight away. And my slope is minus 50. So the next one is just a link to tin. So I just say, okay, send that, um, th th that particular uh, string that I created, uh, interface cut, down to the tin surface. So I'm replicating the final cut and fill that you would normally have. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that is because I can now modify it in the fixed part of the road. I can do all those sorts of nice fixed modifiers that you've seen. I can now do on the final because I created it that way. So that's the idea of creating these sorts of things. So again, you've got an end command. So that's where you, we, I've, I've finished all my final cut and fill. I want to get out of there, right? So it drops down to a, to a label down the bottom where it's end. And the same goes for the fill batter. This is where I first test up the top. Okay, so it's got that, that, that uh, else or, or, or other than type check. And I do the same thing there. I've got to create the actual link in the, as a fixed string and then do two tin. So even though it might seem a little bit long-winded and you think, oh, well, they're a final cut and fill you to do that, but you've now got the access to uh, or, or the ability to modify those strings with all the modifiers that you had in the fixed. You, you, you remember how limited the, 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 uh, the final cut and fill modifiers are. You don't have to worry about that now. So you can then go into here. Again, I insert it, and then I simply just do a, a two-tin modifier, and it goes out to there, and that's my label for the end. So, so that's the idea of that sort of you know, fixed decision. And the, the, the upshot of it isn't much harder than what your normal ones were. It's just that you're now creating fixed links that you can have all the modifiers for you. So you think of all those modifiers that you've done, you can now do it on all those strings. So to sort of give you a, a brief idea of what's that about, I've just simply just got these sorts of little ones here, and we're going to swap over to another MTF file, run it, and then go back and see what it did for you. So talking about modifying things that you've already, already created. So if I go through and I, and I now grab a, the, the decision modifier and I go apply, I've now got in that, in that MTF file, I've now modified one of those batter strings or those bench strings that was created by the, the, the actual fixed decision. Well, you couldn't do that before. Once it was created, that was the end of the story. So now I can go up under here, and if I edit that for you, Right, so it's simply all those nice little modifiers we talked about, or tried to talk about yesterday. So modifying the actual burn. So if I look at the burn there, I'm highlighting the screen where I am. If I bring that up, okay. So I've done this after I've already created the actual burn. I've run all the, all the, all the decisions. But I've now come back and said, look, I want to widen this one. I'm just doing a simple one here. I'm not doing independently grading drains and that sort of stuff. We're just doing a simple widening. So it's just saying from there to there, I'm going to widen this out from three metres to ten. But this is what I was, what I was uh, talking about yesterday, is these little transitions, this little transition from there, whatever that width was, to the new ten metres. That's that transition part I'm talking about there. That's where the link modifier, as I was trying to show you yesterday, comes to its own. Yeah, because you don't have to put values in. You just have to say, I want to, over that distance of 40 metres, I want to go from whatever the value is at the moment to whatever the new value is. And it is three metres to 10 metres, but I don't care. 
Right? I just go position, position, and I'm done. So that means that if ever you go back and change the width of that first modifier, that 10 metres, you don't have to go and change the other two. They already know about those values, and that's what that position all is working for you. If we have a look at, um, so, so obviously we're, we're, we're modifying something. You will notice that the, Mick touched on it the other day about uh, doing absolute modifiers and something that's being created before this modifier. And it only references that one. So you know, it doesn't know about that string, it's just it's being created. So a bit like the interface here, I've widened out that batter and the interface from there up has to be rerun again because it doesn't you know, know that, that's, that you've moved that. But it's just simply running the interface command again to tin option again. It's not that hard, you know, it just simply just runs that command again. So you'll be a little bit aware as we go through all these things, not only the actual modifiers, but all these other shape things and all the stuff we're going to do in the, in the, over the next few days. Um, you have to be aware of where they are inside the MTF file. You can't just automatically think, oh, I'm going to change this here. You know, you've all had the times where everything has the cause and effect. So you've got to be aware where these things are changed. And um, you know, so in this case here, I knew if I widened it, I'd have to go and redo my batter again, which is, which is fair. So just as a quick little one while we're in the modifier idea, we have a little uh, option here, and it's under the trim part of, of, the, uh, of the modifiers, and it's um, trim, uh, trim to sections. So what this is, the modifier that really is going to save you again a lot of times, and I keep on reiterating on that all the time about how things are going to save you time, that was, that was the idea of version 11. You know, and it, it quickly, it started first off as a, let's fix up a few things that were, you know, that were, uh, uh, need to be done, to a full-blown version that's um, uh, gone totally ballistic. And uh, from a design point of view, it's going to be an you know, invaluable version. So all this basically does is it takes the string, and this string here is this little, the actual magenta string there. I'm not turning around looking at the screen, I've got a sore neck. So uh, hopefully it's all showing up nicely up there. So it's an option that says, OK, I will take that string. And this string came from the, the main roads Culver program. So we're lucky they, that it was generated by that. It could be any string at all you draw. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to have Z levels, it's just a CAD string, okay? And I can take that string and trim all my sections back, right, to actual real Z values, and, and, I, and I specify my string, my interface string at the, at the top, and we'll just run it for interest sake, okay? So what that's, that's saved you is two modifiers, okay? Because before you used to, if you had that string, at the, on, on your shoulder you had to go insert, a, a, a temporary string called um, you know, um, wall or something, head wall. Then you had to do a two string modifier to get that out to there. And then you had to, well, maybe three modifiers. Then you had to go and say no final cut and fill to, to get your interface string to get there. That's how you would treat that little area. But now it's one modifier. It just simply says, here, here's the string, trim all the sections back, I'm done. Yeah, so you can use it for anything, not only things like that. You could have temporary jobs or future lines where you want your job to just finish and just hang in midair for the development of something else. So you just got to draw a string and trim everything back. So it's quite a nice way of doing things. Okay, so inside those sorts of modifier ones, we also have situations when, let me have a look over here, is we've got a, a a geotechnical sort of report, and we know that in that particular area here where we've got our, 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 our berms and batters, we have a, a rock area. Okay, so in that rock area, we're not going to really want to do it, and the rock area is defined by that red polygon. So I really don't want to try and do all those batters. Okay, I'm going to do a more of a vertical type batter. So I want to be able to make a decision of, in this process, where that happens. And that was the option I first mentioned before about polygon. Okay, that's what that red polygon is going to do. So it's going to know about that red polygon. Inside there, it's going to do something different. So it's just another advancement on things like the actual tin decision. This is actually a polygon decision. So if we finish off those ones, and we go and grab the rock batter MTF, and we're going to run that one. So just watch this here. All the batters will change and become an actual rock surface. So we go to our section view, this is where my, my views will start to play up on me. See what I mean? <laughs> Anybody out there knows what that is? I'd love to know. Right, so, but we'll get by. 
Um, right, so inside here is the actual rock batter. So, so all that means, it's simply, now it's gone to a one in 200% slope, not quite vertical, but it hasn't done all those little berms and batters that I had. So if I go and open this up, as you said, you can appreciate there's quite a lot of data in here, so I'm just showing them already pre-done for you and just give you an idea of how it works. So basically it goes down to here, and I've got a, a, after I've done my table drain, this is what we did before, remember I checked for the tin, can I do my table drain? Yes, I can. I've dropped down to the insert, I've, I've inserted the table drain using the fixed insert. I now want to go and check, okay, I've got the table drain, but am I inside this polygon area where this rock is? So it's simply a decisional modifier, very similar, and then it just says, okay, go and pick a polygon. So you could do things like this for, you know, like any polygon you set up for cut fill, you could do something different in a large fill area compared to a, 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 um, a cut area. It's just by you organising these polygons and saying, okay, what do I want to do with these? And um, I think you do some of the polygons in your uh, subgrade analysis. I think we actually create a couple of polygons there and stuff like that. Um, so it just means that you can now isolate. It's a lot easier to say, hey, I want to do something here rather than having to go and create some sort of elaborate test. So it just simply just goes to do rock. So we, we go down to the do rock label. And what I've done here is um, with the actual rock one, like we saw, talked about yesterday, it's a little bit interesting because I've got to set the limits to where, the, where that rock is. So I've drawn a couple of strings okay, that actually define where that rock is and I've used the alias option that we, that we talked about yesterday. So what the alias means, I'm going to call this area rock, okay, and it's going to be where those two strings that I've drawn cut my centre line. I just drew them in CAD, two strings, and that's where I want to do my actual uh, yeah, decision there. So that means that the alias part I can come back and I can do things. I have to do a couple of modifiers around that area. So rather than have to go and pick those strings all the time, saying cut other string, cut other string, I've just called it an alias called rock. So that means that these two modifiers here, okay, those two there use that alias. So I don't have to go and pick those strings all the time. So I'm simply just uh, inserting a string and then I go and say to, at, a, at a cross fall of 200% and then I just go 210. So it's very similar to what I did before, I've just changed the actual slope. So that way you can, you can set up those polygons and be able to, to, to make the, the fixed decisions work for you. So you end up with um, something along those lines for the actual drive. So these are the actual battle lines. And if we go for a bit of a drive along here, this is the right hand side. We'll come back and uh, give you a bit of an idea how, of how we did that. We did that so, uh, slightly different than using fixed decisions. But this is the actual batters that I'm getting. Now you might notice that here I did just something different. I, Instead of getting the, the, um, the rock bitmap that looks fairly severe, the one that, we, that we've got in 12D, I actually created a bitmap from the aerial photograph. So it looked a bit more natural sort of thing rather than um, this really hard rock surface. So, so you, you can actually get those sorts of things from and then save them to your library and just give them the same size of what those rock and those net textures that you've got inside, your, inside 12D. So what you end up with is, if we go to our, our view, this is our, our rock wall, okay? So it's just gone through and then turned around and done that. So it's going to give you a lot of flexibility. And I said, with, uh, with, and the upside of it all is that they're all fixed strings. So you can modify all the modifiers that you like, you can do on those, on those strings once they've been created.